Welcome back to the channel. I'm Rob Sandstrom. If you haven't been here before, I like to uh, make things uh, out of wood, epoxy, acrylic with my laser. And in this video, I want to cover what bits I actually use when I am making uh, catch-all trays or dishes, especially kids' dishes. I've made several of them over the years. The first example is this sunflower tray that I made for my granddaughter, Reagan. The next example is for my granddaughter, Emerson. That's this dolphin dish. And the last example is this dinosaur dish that I made for my granddaughter, Lila. And I also made a spoon to go with this. I want to talk about which bits I actually use to make those dishes. In the early years when I'd first make these dishes, I'd use a couple uh, standard tools called ball nose bits. Here's an example of a ball nose bit. Now this one is a quarter inch shank and it's uh, about an inch long and it's just comes up to a flute. Uh, the flutes come up and a nice rounded end and this allows you to get that rounded corner. Another ball nose that I acquired later was this one right here which works terrific. This is a 3 8 inch ball nose, so you need to have the ability to have a 3 8 inch collet and be able to mount this. Like the quarter inch, it's the same thing. It's uh, flutes come up and it's got a rounded top, which allows you to make the nice rounded shapes in the actual uh, sides of the dish. Let me show you. So what you'll notice on this dish is the edges here are rounded, and that can only really be accomplished by either a ball nose bit or the other bit that I'm going to talk about here in a second. After my first couple dishes, I decided I needed a better way. And so I researched and found there are things called uh, dish bits or bowl bits. They get seem to be interchangeable. So I went and I started uh, using dish bits and bowl bits. The advantage of a bowl bit or a dish bit is it's typically uh, bigger than your uh, normal ball nose and it's got a flat end. Let's take a look at the bits that I use. This was one of my early bowl bits or dish bits. It's a Freud bit. I'll talk about this a little bit more uh, later in the video. You can see it's got a flat bottom for doing the bottom of the dish, yet it's got a radius corner right here. A couple other uh, bowl bits that I received, these are from Rip Precision Tools, is this bit which you can say, see has the same shape, flat bottom. This is called a bowl bit, a radius corner, and uh, fluted edges that come up straight, which again provides the ability to make that curved transition. This one happens to be a three-quarter inch diameter, so it can cut a three-quarter inch swash at any given time. Another bowl bit that I use is this one here, and this is 7 sixteenths of an inch. And you say, well, why do you need uh, different sizes? Well, let me show you. So if you have a bigger bowl bit or dish bit, it can't reach all the areas you actually want to in some cases. So in this example, let's use this one inch dish bit. You can see it can't get down into the nose. It can't get down into this area, or it can't get down into the tail. Whereas a 7 sixteenths inch uh, bowl bit, you can actually get down into those areas and have nice smooth transitions. So you determine which size bowl or dish bit you want to use if you're making these plates based on what you're trying to carve. So that takes care of the bits that actually make the dish section of the bowl. Now you need to cut the bowl out. I like to use a compression bit, and I think you probably have seen compression bits before. They have an upcut section at the top or the bottom, however you're looking at it, and then they have a spiral down cut at the upper part of the bit to help with tear out. So I'll either use a quarter inch bit, a 3 16 inch bit, or a 1 8 inch compression bit, depending on the amount of intricacy I need in the curve. So let's take this dolphin. I have a mermaid, I have several others. And in this dolphin, you can see there are some tight areas in these sections. So if I was to be trying to use a quarter inch bit, I really couldn't get the detail that I wanted in that section. So I choose which bit I'm going to use based on the need for cutting it out. Last but not least is the decorative part of the dish. As you can see on this dish and the dolphin, I've carved Emerson in here, and I will actually use a, a carving toolpath, a pocket toolpath inside of a pocket toolpath. 
and I've used a 1 8 inch end mill here and a 1 8 inch end mill or quarter inch end mill here. In this dish, on the decorative part, I used a V-carve bit. Most of this was done with a 30 degree V-bit, but at times I will use a 15 degree V-bit. Making a dish and carving it is pretty straightforward. If you know the bits that you want to use, that will make the job much easier. Let's take a look at a typical bowl bit. The parts that we're most concerned about would start with the bottom of the bit, which is the diameter of the bit. Basically, that is how much of a cutting path it can take. The next element that we're uh, concerned about when we look at it is the radius of the bit, and that's the type of curve it's going to leave in the edge of the bowl. The next measurement you will hear about when you look up at the specs is cutting depth. The cutting depth is the depth of this head. Although that's called the cutting depth, that's not the actual depth by which you can carve a bowl. You can carve a bowl to the level up to this mark. This mark that uh, this arrow is pointing to is the depth at which you must insert this bit into the collet to make sure that it's stable enough and won't snap on you. It's interesting to note none of the bit manufacturers that I've uh, researched to date will actually provide this carving depth measurement. They provide the depth of cut, which is the head uh, and the diameter and the radius, but not the carving depth. To do that, you have to either measure that with a set of calipers, which is what I did on a few of mine, and then actually measure how far the uh, bit is going to go in to the material and bring that back to your Vectric or other CNC design software and decide how deep you could cut without having the collet hit the top of the material or the side. At this time, let's walk through inserting a bowl bit and how you would make sure that it's at the right depth and then measure how deep a carving you can put on your material. So recall from our earlier discussion, this bit must be inserted to this line where my thumbnail is. And so that's what I'll be doing. Now that the bit's in place and buried all the way to the line, the next thing to do to determine how deep you can use this bit to carve a bowl with is to measure it. We already measured it once with the calipers, but to make sure that we've got the right depth, we can measure it physically against the material. I've inserted the bit and I've lowered it to the lowest I would probably feel comfortable with. What I'm looking at is the clearance right here between the collet and the top of the wood. So I would measure that depth and that would tell me how deep I could actually carve this bowl to. Any deeper, and I would risk this collet right here hitting the top of the wood as it's carving. Now, if you're a little bit more of a risk taker, you could probably lower it just a little bit more. Let's see. I just lowered it another two millimeters and you could probably lower it there, but I wouldn't feel that comfortable carving the dish because, well, I just, I like some margin. So that's probably the area I'd feel most comfortable with right there. For me, the most accurate way of measuring this depth that I can program into my software is using my Laguna handheld controller. So what I've done is I've zeroed the bit at its current location. The next step is I will raise the bit up and then have the bottom of the bit touch the surface and that will give me the actual clearance. So we'll do that now. So there I'm a little too tight, so I'm going to come up one millimeter. And I can see on my Laguna controller that my depth of cut, where I won't hit the collet for my dish, would be 23 millimeters. I can now take that to the software when I'm carving the dish. Let's do a recap of what we covered in the video to this point. We discussed bits used in making bowls, dishes, and trays. Primarily the bits we talked about were bowl bits or dish bits, they're synonymous, ball nose bits, 
and compression bits or end mills for cutting the dish out. For each bit, we discuss key characteristics for consideration with most of the time spent on bowl or dish bits. For the bowl bits, we discussed the most restrictive element is ensuring the collet won't hit the top of the material when it's inserted and the tool starts to perform its duty. The next thing I want to cover is how we would use those bits in programming the software in vCarve Pro. Now I'm in the uh, Vectric vCarve Pro and I've got this Christmas tree that I previously have put a video out on and I'll put an end card or I should say in a card in the top of the screen here and I'll also put a link in my description if you want to go follow along and carve this Christmas tree. So let's go through how I set up the actual tool pass here. Start depth I put at zero. The cut depth I put at Z minus 0.2 and as I hover you can see it says Z minus 0.2 equals 0 0.8 inches. If I would have put the equal sign in that would have been in 0.8 inches. Now I know that that's the limit of my actual tool uh, that I'm going to use. I can't go any deeper, 0 0.8 inches. So now let's uh, let's talk about tools. This is a regular pocket tool path and a 7 16 inch. If I wanted to use a bigger tool to do the clearance and then finish up with this 7 16 inch bull bit, I could do that. I would just simply go to select. Because this is a new database, I haven't imported all of my tools. These are the standard tools that come with the database. I'm going to go import the bowl bits from the RIP uh, tool database that he provides. And I have a video on that from before. I'll put a link in the description if you want to know how to import the RIP tool database into your Vectric files. So I'm going to first go to this here, which is imported tool database. I've exported from my old VCAR the actual ball nose bits and I'm going to hit open. I'm going to import it and so there's two bits in here. One is a three quarter inch bit. We talked about that earlier in the video. One is a seven sixteenths inch and you see that I have the seven sixteenths inch bit selected. So let's also select the three quarter inch. Uh, pass depth, he actually has it 0.625. I'll leave that uh, for this time. I would probably actually reduce that to 0.25, but we'll hit select. And now we've got both bits, and you'll see it took the 3 quarter inch bit and put it in front of the 7 16 inch because it recognized it's the clearance bit. I come down here, I hit the selector switch button, I highlight dishes. Hit close, hit calculate. Let's preview what that's going to look like. Preview the visible tool pass. This one is a three quarter inch bit. This one is a seven sixteenths inch. Now you can see these little lines in here. What do you think causes that? Well, the main thing that will normally cause that is the step over pattern. So let's take a look at that for these bits. So let's look at the first bit. And the step over is 44.8. And I would rather have that be around 10% to give me the smoothest dish bottom possible. And now I'm going to go to this 7 16 inch and I'm going to edit it. I'm going to make that 8% and I'm going to recalculate. And now you can see that the step over is much less. I'm going to hit preview the visible tool pass again. And as you can see that cleaned this up quite a bit. So the key is smaller step over and you'll notice that I do have a round over tool path I have in this bowl. I didn't talk about that actually in the video that I made because I just added it for a demonstration I'm doing for the San Diego Fine Woodworkers Association. And I do have a separate video on how to use round over bits. If you want to see it I'll put a link in my description and I'll put a card here on the video. But that's how the dish turns out. Let me do one thing here real quick. So if we look at the total time, we can see that the total time for this dish is only 28 minutes. Well that's a wrap. I hope you picked up a thing or two watching this video. If you liked it, I'll give you a gentle reminder to please give me a like. Uh, give me a comment if you would like to see something additional or there's something you think I missed out that others could benefit from. 
And uh, please give me a subscribe if you would like to see these kinds of videos in the future, if you want to be made aware of those. I discussed a couple other videos in this one that I previously made. In this video, let's do a final recap. We discussed the types of bits used for making products with a recessed bottom. We discussed uh, some key considerations and precautions, such as making sure you don't put the uh, bit too deep that you end up hitting the collet. Also, uh, the amount of uh, radius you want on the sides of the uh, bowls or dishes. And we uh, demonstrated one method for setting up the tool path for using a bowl bit. Once again, I hope you got something out of this. And I'll gently remind you again, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this video as I try to grow the, uh, subscribe to this channel as I try to grow this channel and provide more relevant and interesting information. Have a great day until we meet in this medium again. Mm -hmm.